Hey church, my name's Zoe Reed, and I have got the absolute pleasure of sharing today's devotion with you. Um, so we're going to be carrying on our theme on relationships and I'm going to be looking at the relationship between David and Jonathan. And I want to encourage you to read 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 to 4. I'm just going to look at a couple of those verses, but I'd really encourage you after this devotion, go away and just read it, read it all. It's, it's some good stuff. Um, so I'm going to be looking at verse 1 and verse 1 says, by the time David had finished reporting to Saul, Jonathan was deeply impressed with David. An immediate bond was forged between them. He became totally committed to David. From that point on, he would be David's number one advocate and friend. And then I'm going to be look, looking at verse 3 and this says, Jonathan, out of his deep love for David, made a covenant with him. He formalised it with solemn gifts, his own royal robe and weapons, armour, sword, bow and belt. So Jonathan and David came from really different backgrounds. David was a shepherd, so he will have spent most of his days in a field with sheep. But Jonathan, he was a prince, so he would have spent most of his days in the palace surrounded by royal servants. So they both grew up in very, very different homes. Okay, yet, even though they grew up in different homes, totally different life, they were both warriors and real men of faith who served God wholeheartedly. So my thought on this relationship is that everyone needs a true friend. In Genesis 2.18, it says it is not good for man to be alone. And God wrote this before sin entered the world. So even before sin came into the world, God created us with a deep need to be in relationship and with, in a, with a deep need to be with friends, to have friends and people that we're close to. So the David and Jonathan friendship is really, really unique. This is the kind of friendship that you can only really have with one person. A real unique closeness, unlike any other relationship that you may have. And it probably only comes around once in your lifetime. When you're, when you're at school, you'd probably describe this kind of relationship as my best friend. And I know at school, when you're, you, you have a different best friend every week, but um, not, not in this case. Um, that person that thinks the same as you. You just connect, totally get each other. You may not see each other all the time. You may live like miles away from each other. But when you see each other, it's like you've never been apart. You just pick it up where you left it off. It, you don't need warming up. You're just straight there at it, being totally honest with each other. Um, you, it's, it's, it is, it's like you've never been apart. You are totally yourself with this per person. You don't pretend to be anyone else. You, you're totally yourself. Um, and they often know what you're thinking because they're probably thinking exactly the same. They see you on the worst days, on your worst days and still love you. And they see who you can be when you don't. They believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. Um, I really think that this kind of friendship is a real, real gift from God. And it takes a long time to develop. It doesn't just happen, it takes time and it takes commitment to keep it going. But it makes life way more fun. And when times are hard, it, this kind of friendship keeps you. This kind of friendship sustains you. Um, Jonathan gave David his royal robe and weapons. And this robe, right, it wouldn't have been like any other robe. Nobody else that this will have been the only one. Nobody else will have had a robe like it. It would have identified Jonathan as um, son of the king. Um, so it, it was part of Jonathan's identity. It would have stood out um, and, it, and it showed jo um, like Jonathan's privilege and Jonathan's position. And also he gave David his weapons. And, and I really think that by giving him his robe, um, this was showing and helping David to feel that he was equal to Jonathan. Jonathan wasn't better. Jonathan wasn't a, a, a above David, but it, it was making David feel that he was equal. And by giving him his weapons as well, he was showing David that he would protect him. So I think friendship really means from this, what, this is what I've taken, that you need to give of yourself in friendship. As Jonathan gave of himself, he gave part of his identity to, to David opening your heart, being vulnerable to that, that one person. True friendship really requires sacrifice. You need to give time, 
um, and and as well, I think it, it's not just getting, is it? It's giving of yourself. It's 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 listening. It's getting to know people. It's doing things that that you may not enjoy doing, but you know they do. Um, forgiving people when they've hurt us. It it does take real real hard work, and and it's not always great, but it brings real joy and it really sustains you when when times are hard. And Jesus has shows us that if we live by ourselves life we've lived life wrong we need to share it with other people so i really want to encourage you today to to be that kind of friend pray to have that kind of friendship in your life you may already have it but you may need to recognize it so ask god right today i really want to encourage you to show you and to help you to be that kind of friend okay so let me pray for you before we go God, I really do pray that you would help each and every single one of us to be a real good friend to people. Help us to be a friendly, friendly person today. And I pray that you would, um, if, if we're feeling lonely and we don't feel like we have a friend, God, I really do pray that you would show us who we could be friends with today. I pray that we would be the friendliest people that we could be today. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of friendship. In Jesus' name, amen. Audacious Church, have a fantastic day. Love you.